Hi everyone, Manuela Marcajani from Isomers Laboratories. Welcome to our channel. This is a channel where we talk about the science of skin care through the perspective of a cosmetic chemist and a manufacturer. We've been doing this for over 30 years here at Isomers Laboratories and we like to share our information and just blow some ideas and answer your questions. Today, we're gonna to talk about retinol. I'm gonna answer all of your questions regarding retinol. The first one here is, why is retinol drying at first, when you first use it? Well, the reason why retinol is drying when you first use it is think about retinol, what it's doing. It's retinol or retinoic acid, retinaldehyde, any of these elements, what they're doing is causing exfoliation. If they are a high dosage, right, there's a strong concentration and this is new to your skin, it is forcing your skin that's moving at one pace to move very, very quickly all of a sudden. So your skin is shedding, it's layers at this pace. In comes retinol and all of a sudden it's, it's forcing it to shed and move a lot quicker. So why is that drying? It's because you're peeling away the skin a little faster than it's ready to come off, peel away. And so it is less prepared for the environment. So it's less hydrated or less moisturized. So what you're seeing is more dryness. What are some of the side effects of using retinols? Retinols have a lot of good in them, but when you're using the retinols, because they are very active and they go into the skin and they really cause a lot of things to happen very intensely, okay, so you have that rapid cell turnover, you're going to see dryness. You may also see certain areas become more sensitive than others. Some areas, especially areas that are closer to the nose and mouth, you will notice uh, maybe some swelling, you'll notice some bumps raised up, additional breakout can happen as your skin kind of purges up or stuff that's underneath is finally being able to come up to the surface very quickly. So you'll see a bit of a breakout. You may end up with, um, allergic reaction, some people have had that as well. And also it makes your skin susceptible to more sunburn. So you want to be very, very careful because that's gonna be something that addresses the pigmentation and could damage your skin long-term. So with retinols, some of the side effects don't happen right away. So you're gonna to have to be careful with how you interact with the sun when you're using them. What is the difference between retinol and retinoids? And this is a really good question because you have to think about it as they're the same thing. They're just in different categories or different hierarchies, okay? So a retinoid, a retinoid is the actual category. So if you were thinking about it as an order of importance or strength, the retinoid is the category. A retinol is a retinoid. Retinoic acid is a retinoid. Retinaldehyde is a retinoid. So that is, they're all retinoids, okay? But they're all at different stages, okay? So they're all at different stages of what we call conversions. So you have your retinoid. The, the strongest one is going to be retinoic acid. The next one, one conversion down, is retinaldehyde. Another conversion down is a retinol. So we in skincare usually use a retinol or you can use a retinaldehyde, depending on your formulation. And you use them at, you know, ideally at a lower dose. Then you have the retinoic acid, which is the prescription strength product. So that is the difference in the family and how they are categorized. The best way to use a retinol to avoid irritation is first of all, don't use a retinol that's a very high dosage. Don't use it on skin that is super irritated because if your skin already is, you've cleansed your skin really harshly, you've scrubbed your skin and then you put a reti retinol on, that could actually lead to ir more irritation because you're dealing with something that, you know, consider it very active and very aggressive. So around it, 
your before and after step when you put on your skin should be things that allow it to do its job but should also comfort and protect your skin, right? So that's the idea of what you want to do. You want to keep this retinol active but you don't want to make it destructive and you also want to protect your skin. So you want the best of both worlds. So how are you going to do this? You're going to make sure you use a low dose retinol or you go on a retinol calendar where you're not using it every day, you're using it regularly every say three or five days. In between, you're going to use something like a niacinamide and a ceramide that's going to help hydrate your skin. Um, and also stay regular to avoid uh, irritation. It is not safe to use retinol or retinoids during pregnancy or breastfeeding. And this is because this is an active ingredient that can be systemic and can affect the baby and can affect your body in undesirable ways. We want to be able to stay safe and healthy during these times, especially when you're responsible for someone else. So it's really important to stay away from the vitamin A acids and the retinols and retinoids at this time. Um, there are alternatives. You can use a lactic acid, you can wear sunscreen. Those are things that you can do that will stay on the surface and not necessarily interact with the mechanism of the body and the skin. Are plant retinols as effective as traditional retinols? Ser you know, honestly, no. So when you have the actual retinol, the retinoids that come from that vitamin A element, they have their efficacy, they are standardized, they have a, a mechanism by which they work. When you're talking about Bacuchiol, it is considered a natural retinol. It, it's not really 100% scientifically proven. It is very gentle. It does show some promise in the sense that it will help with that cellular turnover. It will help with a bit of the brightening or whatever, but it doesn't even compare in the ability to create the collagen, to create that connective tissue, to go on and rebuild and regenerate, such as the retinoids do. So although a lot of people prefer to go a natural route or to do something that's gentle, that is part of a good skincare routine. There's nothing bad by you utilizing it. But if you really want a curative element, there's nothing like the vitamin A derivatives. Is retinol better for fine lines and wrinkles or is it better for acne? Well, the answer is it's, it works for both. Okay, so the, the retinoid family has that ability to bridge from anti-aging to acne and everything in between because it's all talking about skin and collagen quality. So when you're thinking about acne and you're young and you've got acneic skin, cystic acne, problematic skin, there's issues with cell turnover and impaction and clogged elements and bacteria, retinoids can get in there and they can help regulate. So this is gonna help regulate that exfoliation. It's gonna help regulate and normalize a lot of uh, systems. And also it will deal with the scarring because one of its components outside of the exfoliation is that it's going to help create collagen or, regen or regeneration. So there's that healing and repair. For anti-aging, if we're on this end of the spectrum, we're talking about the fibers of our skin, the connective tissue that have been damaged and they need revamping. So this is part of that regenerative process. So you don't have to choose. You can use this one ingredient or one science for both ends of the spectrum. Can retinols damage your skin? Absolutely, retinols can damage your skin. If not used properly, retinols can lead to skin damage. There's a few things that can happen. First of all, you can be using retinols that are very high dosage or very poorly formulated, and that can actually cause skin damage. You will see it. Your skin could get burnt. Your skin can get irritated. You can have some kind of disruption on your skin and compromise your skin. And if you're not careful, um, the damage can be permanent. Also with ret retinols, you could go, you know, you could be using a high dosage, you're not protecting your skin in the daytime or under UV uh, lights, and that's going to allow the UV to get in there because your skin will be much more vulnerable. So it is something that you need to work with care and caution. You need to be mindful 
when you're using retinols. You should actually just be mindful all the time about your skin because it is your wrapper, it is your calling card, it is important because it's what contains and holds you and represents you. So when you keep that in mind and you wanna you know, do the best for the largest organ of your body and you wanna use the retinols, Think about the fact that this is a powerful thing. This isn't just makeup. It's not just you know a silly moisturizer or something that has no value. It actually has value, and if it's misused, it can lead to something that you know years from now you regret uh, the mistakes that you've made. You know with it. So respect it. Use it properly. You and always go slow. You you never you never make a mistake when you go slowly or lightly when you're using less. Don't use more. Use less but be more consistent and don't overdo things. If it's working really, really well, stick to it. No need to amplify things or no need to shock your system or shock your skin. Um, sometimes the shock ends up doing something. You know, I always remember a lot of girlfriends uh, that I had in, in high school and, and university. You know, eyebrow fashion changes a lot, right? And then they go and they, they get them all done really, really, really thin and then they never grow back and so you have to live with it. Well, this is the same thing with retinols. Just go slow, because they can damage your skin, and just be careful. Can you use retinol every day? Absolutely. If you're using a low dose retinol, you can use them every day. If your skin is used to it, if you have a favorite one and your skin has built a tolerance to a specific formula or a specific uh, intensity or concentration and you are seeing great results, absolutely. So this is something that is very, very uh, personal. I personally have seen where people eagerly use a high dose retinol after a week or so, their skin breaks up, their skin is really bad, the skin becomes you know, very sore and they have to go off of it and then they go back on it and it takes a while to get used to, right? So I always say start slow. Start by using it once a week for the first week, then twice the second week, three times the third week and see where your skin is at. If your skin starts to love it at three times a week, that's fine. If you want to use it every day, I'm a creature of habit, I like things every day, it's very, very consistent. So I like the low dose, the microdosing of retinol. If you microdose it, you can use it every single day. And it's usually because it is a microdose, it doesn't cause any kind of spikes or any kind of adverse reaction on the skin. How do you choose a good retinol? I think you have to look at the formulation and you have to look at what's also in the formulation. I like a retinol that is combined with niacinamide. I like a retinol that is balanced in a low uh, micro dosage or a low dosage that's stabilized. I like a retinol in a basically a lipid or cream type formulation as opposed to a gel. And this is because I understand how my skin reacts and what my skin needs. So you're going to have to actually go in and test a few of them. But you don't have to go with a very expensive brand. You can go and get a very good retinol. Retinol is one of those things that should be affordable, easy to use and well formulated. A lot of good retinols out there that I, I prefer fragrance free, I prefer simple ingredients, and I prefer it married to something else as well. Not just the retinol itself, I like the retinol with a niacinamide, maybe even an azelaic acid combined in there for good measure, another antioxidant. That's a really good uh, formula and a really good starting point. Can everyone use retinol? Pretty much yes. Um, you were going to have to do maybe a patch test if you have some food sensitivities or vitamin sensitivities. Just have to see if you've never used retinols before or retinoids before. It's really good to do a test patch on your arm. Um, take a little bit of the product, put it on your forearm, see 15, 20 minutes, see if your skin reacts to it. So it could be part of the formula itself or it could be part of the active but pretty much everyone can use it. I recommend that you wait until you know, you're a teenager to start using retinols. Don't, you don't really have to start earlier than that. How long does it take to see results with retinols? Well, that varies. Everybody, you know, personal results do vary. So if you're using it once a week, are you using it five times a week? What concentration are you using it? What other ingredients are you using? What are your habits? You know, are you 
cleansing your skin? Are you wearing sunscreen? So all of these things factor in to the results. Also your age factors into your results. When you're younger, cells turn over faster, things happen faster. When you're older, your metabolism is slower, things happen slower. But usually, usually, ballpark, within the first week, you're going to start to see some changes and difference in your skin. Within three weeks, you should really see exactly what that product is doing for you. Thank you so much for spending time with me today talking about retinols. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to your questions and your comments and I look forward to talking to you soon.